Today on Between the Lines, a business philosophy that is also a guide to life with my guest, Gary Ridge. Welcome, I'm Barry Kibrick. Gary is the president and CEO of the WD-40 company. And there's probably not a single home in America that doesn't have a can of this product. Now, along with his co-author, business guru Ken Blanchard, Gary has written Helping People Win at Work with a philosophy not aimed at just improving the bottom line of a business, but helping people succeed in all walks of life. I'm a writer today because I was a reader when I was 11 years old. And it was... You do, need to, need, you do not need to prove your state of happiness to anybody. Most of these speeches were as much as a month in preparation. The characters, the heroes in this book are seekers of truth. In, in a story that, that involved a lot of corruption. You don't get a chance to really talk about what's real. And that is the first thing to do. Gary, welcome to Between the Lines. It is a pleasure to have you on the show. G'day, Barry. It's just great to be with you. Thank you. Uh, listen, I want to begin. This is, a, this is the first in a series of books with literally one of the great business gurus, Ken, Ken Blanchard, and he chose you to start the series. And I thought anytime some, in fact, you have a theory too about first and last. I'll go over that when we get to it. But when you're the first in this series, he saw something very special in how you were operating the company WD-40. Well, I saw something very special in Ken's philosophy, which was about helping people win. You know, in life, Barry, all we really have is memories. And if we in business can help people create positive, lasting memories by helping them succeed, why wouldn't you do that? And when Ken was a, a professor back at Cornell, he used to get into a lot of trouble because he'd, he'd give the final paper out at the beginning of the class, and then he'd help people learn the answers. And that took away fear and allowed people to learn. And I was in a class with Ken when I met Ken down in U at USD in 1999, and I went, oh, duh. Why don't we do that in business? So we got together and that's how it was born. Well, let's, let's talk a little bit further about the birth and the philosophy because as we spoke about before, and I wanna make it clear to the viewers, this is not a book about business per se. This is a book about a philosophy on how to lead and how to live a life. Absolutely, Barry, you know, so often we forget that life is about a vision you know, if we had a vision, if we all knew what mountain we wanted to climb and we shared it with our families and our friends, would they help us get there? And then it's about values. Have we shared with people what we value in life and have we helped them understand why we value them? And there's a piece we call about a leadership point of view. Have we shared with people why we have certain beliefs and where they came from and why they're so important to us? And then finally, have we shared what we expect from people and what they can expect from us? And we take time to have conversations around that so that we can see how we can be better for each other. You know, it's, I love the saying, I'll lend you my eyes, you lend me yours, and let's see what we both can see. Well, that's what first attracted me was before I even read the book. You signed my book, it's all about the people. It is all about the people. I, I learned a long time ago that micromanagement is not scalable. Uh, I'm consciously incompetent and understanding that and, and being able to have confidence in three words, I don't know, gave me the greatest opportunity in life because I learned the power of people. And uh, I wouldn't be anywhere today without the tribe that I work with, without the people that I support and that support me. So it's not about me, it's about everybody else. Let's talk about tribe. You mentioned that in the book, we're almost every business and philosophy book about business or any form of leadership, they always use the word team. Mm. And you specifically say, I want to use the word tribe. And you specifically have a reason for it because there's so much more an attachment to the word tribe. Team, if the game is over, the team disbands or goes on to play another game. But a tribe has a, a consciousness onto itself from all of its members. A, a tribe is enduring. A team is something you play on situationally to win or lose. If you think about the Aboriginal tribes, you know, I'm, I'm originally from Australia. If you think about the Aboriginal tribes, what were they about? 
They were about endurance. They were about learning and teaching. But more than anything else, they were about belonging. And if you think about Maslow's theory, the first two things that are important in life are basically food and safety. The next one is belonging, love. And most organizations forget that the reason people leave them is because they don't feel that they belong. When was the last time you left a social function, a family function, a club, because you didn't feel like you belonged? And is it in a tribe, if we can create this belonging, then people will stay with us. That's why at WD-40 Company, we have employee engagement levels that blow the socks off everybody. At the number one uh, feedback we get from our employees in our employee opinion survey is at WD-40 Company, I'm treated with respect and dignity. 99% of people around the world positively say that in our surveys. And it's because we do treat them with respect and dignity because we want them to belong because we love them and we help them be better. But let's now show how that then gets reflected because something interesting occurs when you take over this company. This is a company that's over 60 years old or about 60 years old. And the old saying is, if it isn't broke, as, as Ken, I think, or you said it, uh, don't fix it. Yet, you had a vision, and it's basically the, we'll get to the subheading of the book, don't mock my paper, help me get an A. I want to get into that in a second. But the vision that you had not only led to literally a doubling of tripling, so I said not literally a doubling, a tripling of the business in both the market and in the own product sales. Unbelievable for something that's been around for so long all of a sudden to make that kind of leap. So it wasn't broke, yet you probably, <laughs> I've got my can here, you had to squirt a few little pieces of a nice WD-40 in there just to make sure those wheels keep on turning. Well, we had to ensure that we we had created an organization where people could create their own personal magnificence on a daily basis. Um, my dad always said to me, you know, winners win, losers lose. When you're winning, you're grinning. My dad worked for one company for 50 years. He said to me, Gary, a fair day's work for a fair day's pay. Treat people with respect and dignity and things will be okay. And really that's what it's all about. Uh, one of the books that I love is Everything You Ever Need to Know You Learn in Kindergarten. Ah. And I read it every summer because it reminds me about, you know, saying please and thank you is important, respecting others, you know, helping someone across the road. And really that's what we have to do in business. But, you know, Wall Street today tends to incentivize people to inflate their egos so, so they think it's all about them because it's all about the immediacy of today. What we've built over the last 25 years and the 15 years that I've had the opportunity to lead the company is an enduring company that has performed above the market and done it by creating an environment where people go to work every day doing meaningful work for themselves, for the company, and for the community. And Gara, this is not just lip service. When you, and as I say, I don't want to say evaluate employees, but when you work with employees and you say, I want to help them get an A, if they're not getting the A, you're not upset at the employee, you're actually more upset at the managers that aren't helping them get the A, and you take them to task for it. The number one responsibility of a tribal leader or a coach at WD-40 is the success of his tribe members, full stop. And uh, if someone isn't performing, the first conversation I'll have is with that coach or that leader and saying, you know, Barry's not making it, He's not making it on goals or objectives that you and him f set together. What can we do to help him be successful? What roadblocks are getting in his way? And Barry, to be honest with you, the majority of the time we are creating the roadblocks and we don't know. But if we don't have that conversation with the tribe member, they'll never tell us and eventually we'll believe it's them that's failing and it's not. Well, you know, this philosophy, as I mentioned before, it should be incorporated in every school. It should be, in, in fact, just as Ken Blanchard did, he said, I'm giving you the final now, so you know what you need to know. That, I can't believe it's taken us that long to f figure well, it out. It's kind of hors d'oeuvre, but you know, the biggest disabler we have in life is fear. Fear is paralyzing to us. You know, when you think of a, a rabbit in the middle of the road, with lights coming at them, what does the rabbit do? It's so scared, it stops. And what happens? It gets hit by the car. 
So fear is the greatest disabler we have. If we can take the fear of failure out of the situation and give that failure the success factor, then don't you think people would be more successful? It's interesting, most, you know, as Ken says often, he said, it's a, it's a real shame today that most people only know they're doing a good job or they're being a good family member because no one yelled at them today. How sad is that? And how unproductive is it? So what, you know, duh, <laughs> well, let's wake up. But what allowed you to wake up, I believe, is this value that you have, and that is that you really believe that leadership is partnership. Mm -hmm. And so many people don't see it that way. They say the leader is here unless he had a financial partner or something like that, but you're not talking about that. You're saying that leadership is partnership with everyone that you're involved with, either at work or school, government, whatever business it might be. It's about collaboration. I'm consciously incompetent. I worked that out a long time ago. And it's about making sure that we understand what success looks like together that's so important. That's what's the difference between, you know, leaders, you know, think, some people think servant leadership is about the prisoners being in, in charge of the prison. No, that's not what it's about at all. It's about having common goals, but more importantly, having a vision that excites people. Do you want to go where I want to go? You know, our vision is to create positive, lasting memories, solving problems in houses and factories of the world. That is a beautiful vision. It's just that simple. In fact, it, and that's where you say, what mountain do you want to climb? Because that's the difference. It's not a specific business number you're looking at. It's not a amount of stock options. It's just that that's important. And the applause of the execution on a good business will be profit. You know, we want the triple bottom line. We want to create positive lasting memories for the people who use our product, the employees that or tribe members that work in the company and the people they deal with, and the shareholders who trust us with their investment. That's the triple bottom line. Well, you know, that's why I said to you before, you, you had a thing in the book where the first and the last is always the important, and you do that in a few places. And one of them is where you say, the bottom line is important. If we're not profiting, data, you know, that, that's important, but it ranks number six. Correct. Number one through five are all the values that you need to get to six. And number one was the most important one. Number one, value, doing the right thing. Doing the right thing. And values are so important because values are like the river bank of a river. You know, if you think about a river, if it didn't have a river bank, what would it be? It'd be a big pool of water that would become a stagnant lake. But values are like the river banks of a river that helps the water go from the mountain to the sea. So on that river, you can play you can send the people into play on the river. There'll be white water from time to time, but the values will make sure that they arrive at the seaside. They don't stagnate in the, in the lake. You know, you said there'll be white waters, and one of the things you alert us to is to listen to those white waters, and in the words you use, the alarm bell. The alarm bell. Listen to that alarm bell, because oftentimes when we are so involved, we don't get the chance to hear what is, in fact, isn't there a thing where you say, I, I would love to see someone say, I'm just sitting at my desk thinking, right. rather than a leader going, what are you doing just sitting at your you desk thinking? thinking yeah. But if you're really doing that, you get to hear the alarm if it goes off, you get to uh, think of what else may be that the tribe might be doing. So it's very important to have that Talk. sense of, of almost peace within yourself to be able to listen and to be able to lead. And listen with the intent of being influenced is so important. You know, that whole story I tell in the book about the alarm bell was really a learning moment for me. You know, we don't make mistakes in life, we have learning moments. And a learning moment is a positive or negative outcome of any situation that allows us to reflect. But it's all about having that moment to reflect, going to a place of solace. You know, I, I came up from San Diego today on the train and it was wonderful because I, I, I was sitting there thinking, here I am on the train, I'm watching the surf go by, and what, what, what was I doing? I was thinking, I was reflecting, I was musing, I was marinating over so many different things. I could have driven up and I would have not had that time. 
but I took that as an opportunity to go to a place of solace and I, I, I sorted a lot of things in my mind on that journey. Well, you know, you said that's when you had your aha moment. And in fact, how we met was through a fellow named Doug Walker, who we have a mutual relationship with, and he wrote a book called Aha ah. Performance. Mm -hmm. and, and it's so important when you have those light bulbs go off, but they do go off when you're in that serene moment, not when you're trying to think of what should that light bulb be. Absolutely, it's that little time that we don't give ourselves that is so important. A line you use here that I think, again, so important not just in business, but in literally every moment of just life, whatever you're doing, we often let past experience rule our current behavior. Mm -hmm. That's probably one of the hardest things to take to heart. Very easy to say, but you must take that to heart. Otherwise, you're, you fail right away because you, I didn't do something right at this moment, then I, I can't change it. You must be able, the greatest athletes, the greatest golfers, that's what they all do. They're allowed to let that past shot, that let it go as fast as you can. Again, easy to say, oftentimes hard to practice. Live in the past, you live in regret. Live in the future, you live in anxiety. Yeah. Live in the present, you live in the now. That's where it will happen. You know, as my good friend Marshall Goldsmith, you know, he, he always, he has this, this thing, he says, ah, let it go. Oh, uh, my son does this. He says, roll it off. That's it. <laughs> yeah. I want to hit you with something here because I, uh, visions and values we, we talked about, but we didn't describe it the way you did. A vision gives you a sense of direction and values give you a compass to keep you on that course. Mm -hmm. I think that's an important distinction that I want to, to draw out further from you. Yeah, the vision, you know, the values are a, a written reminder of the only acceptable behaviors that you have in your life or your business. And you know, it's, it's like when I talk about the riverbank, they stop you from getting in trouble. You know, why is a, a fence around a paddock of sheep because they don't want the sheep to get out and be eaten by the wolf. That's what values are about. They're a written reminder of the acceptable behavior. They're a discipline in thinking that helps you make decisions that keep you going true north to where you want to go. But you also add that how you implement that, you use two C words, caring and candor. candor. And that obviously is important because sometimes the hardest thing to do because your emotions get caught up in it is to do things with caring and candor when there's a pressure cooker going on, which is why, again, you try to release that valve of pressure. But caring and candor is a, caring, is a message you really want to, to send home. Yeah, caring and candor, being tough-minded and tender-hearted, and the genius is in the end, is really what it's all about. So delivering candor with care is so important. You know, you need to be able to say, and I can sit down with any one of my tribe members, Barry, and I'll say to them, Barry, I mean you no harm. I am here to support you, to help you go where you want to go. If it's not with us, it may be somewhere else. But I mean you no harm. I'm assuming positive intent all the time. How many times in life do we make the mistake of, of assuming negative intent? But if we can assume positive intent, our whole life opens up. Well, you say what it literally does. I'll use your words. It turns everything into a learning moment. Right. Once you have that positive intent, just as you said, there's no fear of failure. It's a learning moment. Every moment becomes a learning moment. You, you almost can't fail, as you said before. That's how you get back to that bottom line because all the values are in line, all the vision is in line, and if you look at it that way, which you only have one way to go. Right, but it's not all kumbaya either. This is a tough world we're in, you know, and, it's, and, and, and at times people don't fit and people do move on. So we want to create an environment also when that happens that, we're not dis that they can go on to do something that's different for them. You know, WD-40 is a great place to work, but it's not for everybody. You know, not everybody has to be ev everybody's best friend, but it's a matter of helping people realize where they want to go next. I told you before that you did a few things, and this is, leads me right up to it, meaningful work. And again, you have a, a, a list, but like before, I'm going to only concentrate on the first and last. First, 
meaningful work. It is conducted in a manner that is good and proper in all aspects. And then the last one, it fuels passion. And I wrote this down. You put it with an exclamation mark. So it was a list that didn't even need punctuation, but you put that with an exclamation mark. So between the conduct of good and proper work and the fueling of passion is the meaningful work. Is the meaningful work. Meaningful work meaning that you know, I'm doing something that's good for me, good for my company, good for my community, good for me, for the soul, good for, helps me learn. And that's so important. People want to do meaningful work. People want to be appreciated. People want to be loved. They want to feel like they belong. You say this too, a, a common theme of this show is persistence. Mm. I am a firm believer that without persistence in any position you have again, it's impossible to make the goals that you vision and the values you have. And I think this is the reason why, and you ask, I'm gonna use your words to describe it, and why it's important that we all do have persistence is because we all have something significant yet to do. So many people forget about the significance of their life. They think they're just one little individual cog, but every one, every individual has something significant that they must do. And you must never forget that. You must never forget that you have something significant yet to do. I don't know for how long now the tie-line on my emails have said, believe in yourself, never give up, take one day at a time, and remember, we all have something significant yet to do. One of those things that you keep having to do, and you said it's because you admit you don't know much, is being that constant learner. Mm -hmm. That's that one thing that, even if it's just that, if it's just having the uh, significant thing is just the continuation to learn, that in itself is, is of a grand scale. I love Columbo. The, uh, oh, the detective yeah. show. And I nearly wore my Columbo t-shirt today. I learned so much from Columbo because he's so inquisitive. He was always asking that other question. He always had that, that real drive to learn. And you know, I, I love saying, really understanding, what can we do today for the first time? When was the last time you did something for the first time? And I guarantee that today you did something for the first time. And if you take a moment to reflect on that, your day will become a much more enriched day, remembering that you're going to do something. Today, I met you for the first time. What and a I, you, Garen, what a pleasure, by a the pleasure. way. You know, you said before servant leadership. I want to hit on that because we, we mentioned it, but I, I want to really make it clear because I think that's so important. Servant leadership, and you say this, with an edge. Mm -hmm. I liked that term. Because you have to serve first and lead second. Most leaders do not follow that prescription. No, and I, that's really where that piece comes in about being tough-minded and tender-hearted. And the genius is in the end. Your servant leadership is not just about serving. It's about creating an environment where what is clear is clear and then helping people get on with it. So it's, that's what's really important. You need to be, to be a great servant leader, as I said earlier, it's not about the prisoners who are in charge of the prison. You know, right. you have to make a safe environment for people to do great things, which is so important. You, and for them to do great things, you use these words. Competence has to do with skill, but commitment has to do with attitude. Correct. Those two must go hand in hand too, because especially in, in, if you're working as a tribe, when you think about it, if you're working as a team, I've seen some hot shots get away without that. But when you're a tribe, you must have both the commitment and the skill, the competence and that attitude, because without that, you're letting your people down. Even if you're the person who's not at top, you're letting your people down. And that's why the culture of an organization is so important. You have to, these things don't just happen. A great garden grows great fruit or great vegetables. Our job is to create a culture that's a rich soil where it allows people to have that comp competence, have that confidence, to create passion, to do all these things. And we as leaders have to water it and fertilize it and, and help it grow. And sometimes we have to pull out the weeds because we don't want them to eat the great plants. But that's okay because we're about 
the health of the total garden. We're not here about the health of one plant. Gary, on, on that note, our time is up and I wanna end with your words. Effective leaders have a clear, teachable leadership point of view and are willing, as you said before, to share it with and teach it to others. Thank you, Gary, for sharing your leadership skills with us today. It's been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, Gary. And thank you guys for joining us. Now, before Gary leaves, I would like to leave you with these few more words from helping people win at work. In short, the well-being and personal growth of the people you're leading are as important, if not more so, as the goals you seek to achieve. I'm Barry Kibrick. Between all your goals and achievements, remember, as Gary wrote in my own book, it's all about the people. Thank you, sir. Thank you. If you'd like to get in touch with us, want a DVD or transcript of our show, catch an episode online, or receive our weekly updates, go to www.klcs.org slash btl. Closed captioning for Between the Lines with Barry Kibrick is made possible by Loyola Marymount University in Los Angeles, ranked fourth best regional university in the West by U.S. News and World Report, and dedicated to the encouragement of learning. we can take the fear of failure out of the situation and give that failure the success factor, then don't you think people would be more successful? On this episode of Between the Lines, a business philosophy that is also a guide to life with my guest Gary Ridge. His book, Helping People Win at Work, shares an idea not aimed at just helping business, but giving people the tools to succeed in all walks of life.